Hello everyone. David Parker Ray is a name some of you might recognize. AKA the Toy Box Killer, he was a convicted rapist, torturer, and a suspected serial killer. Now while the case was active, there was never enough evidence to 100% pin any murders on him, but with the advancements of forensics and investigation techniques, there has been up to 60 murders that could possibly be connected back to David Parker Ray. He was infamous for having a tape that played once the woman woke up after she was kidnapped that detailed every little thing that was about to happen to her while in his custody. Now that tape was actually recovered and if you'd like to listen to it or read a transcript of it, I'll have that in the description but I must warn you that I advise against it. It's something that I kind of wish I didn't listen to and I hope you take my word for that. Now this is why he was nicknamed the Toy Box Killer. This was actually in his house. This is where he conducted all of his tortures, murders, rapes. You can see the stirrups and the chair, all the straps, all the tools, the chains, the whips hanging up. You know, again, not the nicest dude around. Okay, so even though I've spent the first minute of the video rambling about this guy, it's not actually who the video is about. This video is about Cindy Leia Hendy, the girlfriend of David Parker Ray. So essentially what happened in this situation is a woman escaped from the house of David Parker Ray and Cindy Leia Hendy. This led to an investigation of the two and the arrest of both of them. Cindy admitted to knowing what was going on and helping and she was sentenced to 36 years in prison. Now personally I think 36 years for being an accomplice in multiple kidnappings, rapings, torturings, and murders is a little lenient, but that doesn't even matter because she was released last July 20 years into her sentence. To make matters worse, she served the last two years of her sentence as a form of parole so she doesn't have to inform anybody of where she is or what she's doing under any circumstances. To give you a little contrast, David Parker Ray was sentenced to 223 years in prison. So when I first learned about this entire situation, I was a little confused on to why it played out the way it did. You know, firstly, why did this woman only get 36 years in prison, and especially, why did she get released only 20 years into it? So I did some research, you know, expecting to see that there wasn't enough evidence against her or the victims said that it was mainly David and that she didn't really play a role. But no, not only did she admit to it, victim testimonies said that she played as big as a role as David did. So I'm sitting here wondering, how did this happen? So just to dial you in a little bit better on why this decision is so confusing to me, I'm going to relay some information found during the investigation to just really show you how horrific the events that took place were. So a lot of this is going to be shown on the screen just because there's so much to go through here that if I was to sit here and read it all, this video would be 30 minutes long. So I encourage you to pause and read the specific testimonies, but I'm going to start by just kind of giving an overview of what the victim said happened to them. So David's toy box was in a trailer home in the backyard of his house. The women would wake up strapped to the chair and that tape would be playing detailing everything that was about to happen to them. Again, if you'd like to read what those women heard as they woke up from being kidnapped, that is in the description. The victim reported being chained in multiple positions for days on end, raped, starved, electrocuted, and drugged to the point of incoherentness. The victim also said that Hindi was just as involved in the torture as Ray was, the same Hindi who is now free with no supervision. When investigators found the toy box, they found multiple devices of torture, cameras, and photographs documenting not only David doing these acts, but also Hindi. I'm going to read the victim's account of how they escaped because I think it is one of the most incriminating pieces of evidence against Sydney to show that she was not some sort of innocent party in this, but rather that she was fully committed and played a big role in these events. That afternoon, Hindi got a phone call. She became distracted and carelessly left the keys on a coffee table. Sensing this was perhaps her only opportunity for escape, Yamarillo slid her body and stretched to the coffee table to reach for the keys. As she was doing so, Hindi returned to the room and caught her. The two began to wrestle for the keys, and Hendy beat Yamarillo with a lamp. In the midst of the struggle, Yamarillo was able to grab the phone and dial 911, but was unable to communicate with the operator. Hendy hung up the call, and Yamarillo used the momentary distraction as her golden opportunity. She grabbed a nearby ice pick and slashed Hendy across the head. She unlocked herself from the wall and ran. If that doesn't show that Sydney was 100% committed into this, I don't know what will. Not only did she try to thwart an escape attempt, the injuries she gave to Yara Milo almost killed her. So just a quick recap. A woman who helped with the kidnapping, raping, torturing, and murder of over 60 women is now walking free without any supervision. So I could go on and on just because there's so much information about this case and there's so much to digest, but 
you know, I feel like I've pretty much made my point, but I'd like to end this video with a bit of a call to action. Now, I'm not trying to sound like a broken record, and I'm surely not trying to scare anybody. But once again, this woman is somewhere with no supervision. She could be in your state, in your city. If you are a woman, if you have a wife, daughters, a girlfriend, anything like that, there is a risk. The traits that that woman has that make her enjoy doing those things to people, that make her actively seek out opportunities to do those things, they don't go away. No amount of therapy, no time spent in a jail cell is going to take those traits away from a person. Now, I'm not saying that she is necessarily doing anything right now, but people go missing all the time, and they come back in unexplained ways. If you do read the tape, you'll see how they disposed of people. They would drug them to a point of brainwashing to where they didn't even remember what happened to them. Now again, I'm not saying that's happening, but I'm saying it is a possibility. Now I don't know if there's anything anybody can do. Truly, I don't think there is. I think that that woman will probably live the rest of her life in freedom. Now I think that is very unjust. And I also think that if my sister ran into this woman, she wouldn't know who she was. So I encourage you, if you feel a similar manner to me, and you don't agree with this entire situation, spread the word. Share this video. Maybe we'll help protect somebody. That's all I have for you. Bye.